Lawyers who put together wills. What is the craziest oddest thing someone wanted to put in theirs? A relative worked for a firm preparing wills and was confronted by an executor who had an edict to scatter the deceased's ashes from a micro light aircraft. He couldn't fly one. She kindly pointed out to him that the drafting said nothing about whether said micro light was in flight at the time of scattering. I once read an academic article where such a scattering had gone wrong instead them being spread over a wide area the bag got caught in the wind and the cremains fell through someone's front porch. I am a qualified solicitor, my favorite two are. 1. A lady wanted to create a trust fund of £100,000 for her pet fish. When I asked if it was a special kind of fish, she confirmed it was just a normal goldfish but she wanted it to be fed fresh avocado every day and be looked after by a local dog walker after she died. She was absolutely serious. 2. Another lady confessed she had a secret daughter, and she wanted to leave the daughter some money and photographs without the rest of her family finding out. Even her husband does not know. That will be a fun conversation when she passes away. Not a lawyer, but my great granddad had a clause in his will that stated something along the lines of, if any of the beneficiaries decide to dispute the contents of the decedent's estate, their share becomes one dollar and nothing else. Seemed like a pretty good way to maintain harmony among his survivors. I have this in my will. If someone isn't happy with my dying wish, they can politely say no and pass on it. If someone wants to be greedy, they get nothing but a dollar minus postage and handling. I'm not a lawyer, but my grandfather saved his kidney stone so that he could leave it to my cousin. They never really got along. I really like the cut of your grandfather's jib. When my grandfather passed his well asked that I clean out his shed, and I alone, I found herb seeds, old real style film smut, which was hilarious and a bunch of other unsavory paraphernalia, 50s flick knives too. So like clearing his browsing history for him, but cooler. I had a Russian client, son of an oligarch. His father created a trust which provided dispositive provisions for if he was kidnapped and not found within a certain number of months. Freaked me out. I believe the will had similar language too, but I can't remember now. Now that I think about it, I believe there was a separate document, in addition to the trust, that provided that his will should be effective to the extent he was kidnapped and not recovered within a certain period of time. My friend's mother had in her will that cat gets to live in my house alone until it expires the cat lived there for a few years alone with a caregiver checking on it. Yes she was rich. Not a lawyer but I worked with plenty of estates and trust accounts over the years. This particular scenario isn't so much about the will itself being strange, but the circumstances that led up to the trust account being opened. I used to work at a bank in the estates department. I was an administrator who had to manage the files including encroachments upon the capital, that is, I want to take some money out now, please, I had this one account, multi-million dollar trust for one single beneficiary, the son of the deceased, what's interesting is that the son killed the parents, with a hammer in grotesque and brutal fashion, he plead insanity, he would call once a year from the penitentiary mental hospital, requesting $50 for commissary, to buy chips and gum. The call was always strange. He was very polite, very doped up. The quality of the call was always very tinny like he was far away from the phone. Just last week I handled a matter where the parents left millions in artwork to various people, wads of cash to various charities, and only left their kids the family cats. Turns out they did it because the kids got them the cats to comfort the parents in their old age and the parents freaking hated the cats but the kids wouldn't let them get rid of the cats. Imagine hating some cats so much you don't give your kids any of your family's wealth. Nice. Not a lawyer but my mom put in her will that if she dies under suspicious circumstances that my sister and I won't be left anything. She watches a lot of true crime. Not me, but whenever I visited my old grandma in Nicaragua, it would always seem my aunts and uncles would be weirdly nice to her, almost as if she was a famous person. People would be visiting her house to greet her and strike a conversation. One day, my mother walked into my grandma's room to have a conversation with her. I remember during the flight back, 3-4 after the conversation, I asked her what the conversation was about. She told me that grandma used to have children that almost never talked to her, and now that she's sickly they are trying to act nice to get stuff out of her will. 
My grandma wanted to talk to my mom to ask her what she wanted from the house. My mom was always the favorite growing up since she cherized grandma. And grandma wanted to pay her back for being a good daughter. My mom replied with I don't want anything for you. I just want your love and they both smiled at each other. Also she wanted us to take a washing machine back home to sell it for cash. But we declined. For your information, she's still alive. Grandma ain't giving up yet. I read a lot of estate documents as part of my job. There is so much subtle shade in them occasionally. They can be pretty entertaining. One super wealthy lady had a huge section for the care and well-being of her pets. With primary and successor caretakers. A certain amount of money from the trust for care and feeding of each pet. One pet owner might receive 3k a month to take care of one of her pets after she passed. And certain stipulations on how they were to be cared for. While some might see it as excessive. The language and stipulations she had. And how they were referred to showed that she really, really loved her pets. In that same will and trust. She also left a slew of people only one dollar, so that there would be no chance they could take the trust to probate court on the basis that they were merely forgotten. That part had so much subtle shade. A lot of they know what they did. They are well aware of their guilt in the matter, etc. They she split up about two million dollars among five or six different animal rescues and animal welfare charities. It was around 200 pages long, and I swear I read the entire thing just for the sheer entertainment value. I would have loved to read this one. It should have been memorialized in a book with all the proceeds going to one of the animal charities. Not a lawyer, but an aging woman my family knew left her house, large, and in a very affluent neighborhood, and estate to family friends for so long as her cats were alive and taken care of in said house. After they died, the house was to be sold and the remaining estate donated. The weird thing is, it's been like 20 years and the cats are still alive. Also, they've changed color. Haha, <laughs> my kids had a fish that changed color. It too lived an especially long life. My great uncle's official will gave the contents of his outhouse to the city council of a nearby town after they'd tried to take his land twice to build a new water treatment plant. He spent quite a few years fighting eminent domain claims and just wanted to give them something in return. As a joke his kids boxed up all the books and magazines in the outhouse and dropped them off at city hall. Not a will, but a deed. The city I work for was renovating a small park that was donated to the city in the 1910s. We went looking through the handwritten deed for easements or other restrictions and found that the family could claw the property back if the park were not perpetually provided with a fountain of pleasant running water fit for consumption by man and beast alike. The family still has descendants in town, so we installed a new water fountain with a dog bowl filler just to be safe. Okay but this is such a wholesome restriction. Here's one from one of my dad's law partners. He had a lady come in with an itemized list of books and wanted her will to contain all of the books and who will get what based on her choosing. So basically she decides who gets what specific book instead of letting her beneficiaries decide. The truly astonishing thing is how many books and how specific they get. According to dad's law partner her list is at about 2000 books to be divided among about 30 people. She is apparently very specific and comes back at least once a year to add all the new books she's gotten. So basically she decides who gets what specific book instead of letting her beneficiaries decide. This is actually pretty thoughtful. As strange as it may sound. It sounds like she's picking the books out based on what the person may be interested in or is likely to enjoy. It makes it infinitely more meaningful that each book was handpicked just for them. My sister's mother-in-law is leaving her house to her three sons. If one wants to sell out his third of the house. He has to sell it to the other two brothers for one dollar. A Furby collection from models collected in the late 90s. They were convinced they would retain future value. This was 2011. Haha <laughs> whoops. My grandpa gave me all his tools. Which sounds dumb but we are in the same trade and it was a real life changer. It included a lift and his old shop truck so I pretty much got everything to start my own shop but a building. A pretty good chunk of change. And his dog Tanner. As long as I made sure his live-in girlfriend at the time got nothing at all and I told my uncle he was fat and his wife was going to leave him if she couldn't find his pecker. There was literally a script inside the will. 
It all went smooth and my uncle lost weight and Janice is in butthole and it turns out Tanner is kind of in butthole too but it's okay because my grandpa was kind of in butthole. A good one but still sort of in butthole. And they have the same mustache and eyebrows so now I come home from work every day and get stared down by my grandpa while I poop. He gotta make sure you did everything he told you. Oh mans. Not a lawyer. Work for a will writers trust specialist in the UK. Currently studying toward my TEP. One of our earlier clients passed recently. Turns out the man she left almost everything to, including the residue of her estate, which was considerable, was her regular taxi driver. She had also named him as her executor. He had no clue. The woman named as her executor and main beneficiary on her previous two wills, a close friend of many years, was understandably flabbergasted and contested the will. We responded to her solicitor's Lark v. Nugis request, informed Mr. Taxi Driver, who didn't even know our client had passed, and the will was upheld. Aforementioned friend was left a legacy of £5,000 if I remember correctly, but her nose was clearly out of joint. Bonus observation. It takes a lot less than £5,000 being up for grabs to make families turn against each other. Can get really nasty. One of the most startling things I've learned in my short time in this business. I had the first son so my dad decided to leave me more. Except he did the math wrong and it came out to 105%. He had dementia. My wife's grandma is not putting the grandkids in the will to not play favorites. But my wife is her favorite so she made my wife the executor and gave whoever the executor just happens to be 5%. I'm the executor of my grandmother's will. I also get the house and everything in it and a share of life insurance that's split three ways between myself, sister, and mom. My mom has always said that all my dad, my grandmother's son-in-law, would like to have is some table. Well in the will there's like a whole paragraph that states how my dad gets nothing. He doesn't lay a finger on anything in the house or any money. How my dad is basically worthless and deserves nothing and how he was a crap dad and that she begrudgingly has my mom in the will. Thanks grandma I'll appreciate the awkwardness. So this is related. Worked on a divorce up a couple who fought over every single thing in the house. Separating pillows and such. They were left 52 gallons of vanilla extract by her grandmother. In a secondary preceding he was awarded all but 5 gallons. Two weeks later he sent in a case of samples and ziplock baggies to our office along with a request to subpoena a urine test from his ex-wife to prove she pee in the jugs before he picked them up. We never needed to as she screamed in court that she pee them full just like he pee all over her during their marriage, they were neat. This same couple went to court for nearly two years over a beanie baby collection. They had three kids. As a baker, that breaks my heart a little. Poor innocent vanilla didn't deserve that. Not a lawyer, but I work at a law firm. One client left $100,000 to his two cats so they could maintain their current lifestyle. But meow, it's me your cat. My grandma left a penny and a nasty comment to almost every person in the will. All of her sons and daughters. Even a few grandchildren. Except for me. I got $1,000. Thanks, grandma. Not a lawyer but my grandpa puts in his will a chocolate bar for everyone one of his grandkids. Well I have like 12 cousins and very difficult to track down where a couple of them went. All this estates and money he had in will was at a standstill for months because they couldn't find my couple cousins. Had to show court we put in effort to hire someone to track them down etc. The lawyer that was helping execute the will was blown away that this lawyer allowed this and why he wouldn't highly suggest not to do it. But I'm not complaining cause I got a Toblerone out of the deal. Pretty smart way to ensure all the cousins would be informed. And force them to check in on each other. In my mum's will, which I have seen, she has left me the kitchen table and chairs. She lives on a South Manchester council estate. My brother gets the sideboard. My mother told me that she wrote my older brother and older sister out of her will. I assume I am also written out of it, though I doubt she'd tell me because she wants to be around my child. She doesn't get to be, but whatever makes her feel better about herself. If three of your kids aren't talking to you, then we might not actually be the problem. I, early 20s, was forced to write a will due to the health insurance I get at work, and, amongst sensible stuff, 
the in-house lawyer said it was totally okay for this clause to be added. My funeral wishes are that I be buried in a coffin which has been sprinkler aided, such that opening the coffin would cause alarm to future archaeologists. Then a bunch of stuff about if this is too costly I'd be cremated and have my ashes scattered in a specific place. I was always curious if I could request my head be removed from my body before burial in the case of a zombie outbreak so I would do minimal damage to future generations. My old landlord took two years to boot me out because her mother who owned the place died and she wanted to sell the place. But her mother's carer said the mother verbally promised the house to her. Even though it was not written in the will it still took two years of fighting in court to clear things up. No. The carer didn't get it in the end even after all the appeals. Had a friend who had a toxic relationship with his uncle. When his uncle passed he was surprised to find he was in the will. Turns out there was a handwritten I owe you that read I'm leaving you 15k but you have to come get it from me. I'll see you in heck my friend laughed. I work in probate. The oddest thing I've seen in a will is to euthanize their beloved horse. Have it cremated and its ashes scattered with the dissident. Lucky for her horse. She named a horse that was already dead so the one she got afterwards lived to see another farm. Lots of people sending their friends and family on weird errands to spread their ashes. Leaving money for people to take trips and spread their ashes around the world. Pet trusts are a fun one. Leaving a whole whack of money in a trust to be used for the care of the pet during their life. However, my favorite ever, that I obviously didn't draft, was a lawyer who left the bulk of his estate, millions in today's dollars, to whatever Toronto area woman had the most children at a specific date some years in the future. I recall the winner had 10. Saw this answer from a similar question some time ago. When a dad died he set up financial installments so long as his daughter remains under a certain weight. Dude was controlling her diet from the grave. A famous case most law students read is of a mother who left a ton to her son provided he married a Jewish woman. Well, he was already married to a non-Jewish woman. Big mess. Me and a friend from middle school have an agreement that he gets 10 bucks out of my estate. I also want all beneficiaries notified by a mysterious man in a dark suit preferably on a dark rainy day. My grandfather left me one dollar. He had dementia and confused my dad ripping him off with me. He left the rest of the family between $100,000 and a few million each. They all said they felt horrible because they knew the details, but not horrible enough to give up any of their share. The way I see it is it was never my money to begin with, so it's not a loss. I'm just glad my sister got 100000 She needed it more than any of the others. They all said they felt horrible because they knew the details but not horrible enough to give up any of their share. Funny how that works out. A good clause is always for reasons known to them witches will speak for you've gone and fricked up. Butthole. I don't forgive you. In my own will, I've left my father the contents of my kitchen trash can at the time of my passing. For reasons known to him. Worked with a client who wanted language that her cats would be euthanized and buried with her. We had to explain why legally we couldn't do that. The moral part just went over her head. One of the few clients who ever got under my skin. I knew a woman who purchased two standard poodles. $5,000 each purebreds, already grown, raised and trained. After about 3 months, she decided she didn't like them anymore, and tried to have a vet put them down. Her explanation was that no one could possibly care for them the way she did. Not a lawyer but my grandmother's will stated that my father had to outlive her by a certain amount of time. I honestly don't remember exactly how long. I was 15. My father died less than a month after she did. So instead of things going to my father the next step was the estate being divided between me, my sister, and two cousins. It was so bizarre. My own grandmother specified which of the children and grandchildren should get which of the family recipes, and somehow felt the need to include commentary about why certain decisions were made. One recipe was this prohibition era recipe for beer which I knew my uncle, also a home brewer, wanted, but she left it to me, with the comment that I know you wanted it, Teddy, but she has the second, best penmanship of the girls and will make you a copy, and then like 8 pages later, in among the specific descriptions of her vast collection of romance novels, really, was a line, 
and, specific Jew Devereaux title, to Spidey, who will please subtract about half the hops before she copies the beer recipe for her Uncle Teddy so that any of us can drink it. Our John had his IPA last summer and just about died. Uncle John just about burst into tears laughing and Uncle Teddy had long since left the room because he has no fricks whatsoever to give about romance novels. Uncle John, of course, was still in the room because there was also still Yungling. And no, I have no idea how she got this all done. My guess is she wrote it herself and the law students who come to her independent living building signed off on it. It was elaborate, that's for sure. Total value of the estate was well under $8,000. So it was mostly a funny last letter from grandma. My grandmother had her boobs done when she was in her 60s. Nothing really wrong with that. But when she died, she wanted an open casket with her boobs on display. Really nana? She passed away at 80 and got exactly what she asked for. Granddad had ended up sticking two strategically placed daisies on her boobs. So she got what she wanted and so did granddad. RIP granny, you silly b$ ch. Love you. Imaging not being warned of this ahead of time. You rock up to the casket and see and old ladies surprisingly perky fun bags on display. My great grandfather had a pair of socks that he only wore on Christmas day with the family. They were hideous. After he passed, we found out he left those socks to my uncle in his will and told him to carry on the tradition, which my uncle has done. I've already been told I'm getting them next. Lady wanted her small dog to be buried with her. If the dog happened to be alive when the lady passed, she wanted the dog put down and then join her. And let my dog live out his natural life then sprinkle his ashes on my grave. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.